The fitness industry was hard hit during the pandemic. They were among some of the last businesses to reopen. Well, our Annika Pergament sat down with Ann Malam, founder of Solid Core and the new wellness company called Ambition to talk about how the industry is recovering, particularly here in New York. Not only were gyms impacted, but we got looked at as a separate category in gyms. So even when gyms were allowed to be open, it's like, no, 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 boutique fitness, group fitness, you have to wait. Um, so it was very confusing. And, you know, we're sitting and advocating of there's no difference. But our doors in New York, I think it was almost almost a year before we were even able to reopen. So we laid everybody off. We were doing as best as we could virtually, negotiating with landlords to not pay rent. But it was a monthly painful process of continuing those conversations. And how did you recover from that? Because a lot of businesses didn't. A lot yeah. of boutique fitness places, small yoga studios, et cetera, shut their doors for good. Annika, we were, we were relentless. Like we really worked with our landlords to just make sure that we weren't paying rent in a time where we didn't have any income coming in. And I think we, we, we really did a great job communicating with our employees, which we laid off, brought back on with PPP, laid off again, brought back on, decreased their pay. I mean, there was a lot of tumult in every which way when we were running this business back then. So it just took really good communication and preserving our cash. And I think just the optimism that we had of knowing that people want to get back to in-person workouts. We just were so bullish on that, and we're seeing the, the fruits of those beliefs come true today. So simultaneous to people wanting to get back mm -hmm. to in-person workouts, people have discovered virtual workouts as well. And New York is such a competitive marketplace. Going to a boutique sure. fitness place is so expensive. Uh, how do you convince people to come back in? And, and, and are you competing now with virtual workouts? Well. People, based on how business is today, business is booming. We are totally recovered from where we were in the pandemic and, and, and more so. So what that tells us is people were craving socialization and they were craving in-person workouts. There was about 7 million people from studies that were done that got introduced to fitness through a digital medium in COVID. And we're seeing those people graduate wanting to take it out into the real world. And we always had this notion of people don't want to work at home, work out at home, live at home, entertain at home, cook at home and they want to be social human beings. So it frankly hasn't taken that much convincing, at least in our business. Uh, and, and, and we're talking to other people in this space too, and they're seeing the recovery happen as well. Is digital fitness going to be around? But yes, but you're seeing, you know, look at Peloton. I don't think that people want to work out at home. And I also think it's not usually a binary choice. There's enough to go around where some people might choose that for their workout, but we are seeing people come back in droves to in-person fitness. What's unique about the New York City fitness market and why are you now expanding further in this market? Yeah, so I, the New York City fitness market, sort of like the boutique fitness industry started here. So I think there's always been an appetite for it. It's something to do. It's really fun. It's, you know, convenient because there's so much of it here. And New Yorkers just have a real focus, I think, on, on health, fitness, and wellness. You're seeing so much of that happen in the recovery space right now, you know, cold plunging, saunas. I think people are just making it much more a part of their life, even much more so in a social setting. They don't look at it as a transactional workout anymore. So you're an entrepreneur uh, yeah. starting from scratch. Yeah. What is your, and now here you are opening with really a fitness empire and, and, and getting bigger all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, when you speak to somebody who's where you were at one point, uh, what's the best advice that you can give them? I think two things. One, you have to have some passion behind what you're doing because when things get really hard, if you didn't have the passion in the beginning and understand your reason why you're doing this, it can be easy just to give up, right? Like COVID was painful and it was painful for a long time, but it was remembering the reasons why we're doing this that kept us going. And secondly is I think people sometimes look at entrepreneurs and think they like had it all figured out before they started. And that's just not true. So you need to be comfortable with knowing that you're not gonna know everything Thing, and that you have to actually do a fir the first couple of steps in order to figure out what step three is. And Malum, thanks so much yeah, for joining us. Thank you.